Today we are broadcasting at the Texas State Capitol inside the offices of Representative John Frulo. And joining me uh, here in his own office uh, is Representative John Frulo. Thanks again for having us. We appreciate it. Well, you bet, Chad. And uh, welcome to the penthouse suite of your capital. This, this is nice. you got some nice digs here. <laughs> this is a, it's a very nice office, yes. Thank you. Yeah, it's I, your office. It, well, it, no, it's, it's, I'm, just, I'm just a guest. I'm just a guest today. Hey, let, let's talk about uh, the, the session overall. How well, first off, we've got to talk about those Red Raiders. Well, that's true. You know, we, we've got to say. You're wearing the double I mean, T today. Wearing a double T shirt. You yeah. bet. I mean, you know, guns up. Uh, we won last night, as far as I'm concerned. That was uh, just an unbelievable game, unbelievable season. Uh, you know, you just you can't beat it. I mean, I you you could have beat it a... one way. That's it. But, I mean, it was just unbelievable. And you were at a game-watching party. Yeah. Yeah, we had a great game-watching party. Uh, at it was, of course, uh uh, Representative Burroughs and myself from out there in Lubbock, and of course the governor and the speaker, yeah. Governor Abbott, uh, Speaker Bonin were there. It was just, uh, you know, and a lot of members, uh, representatives, uh, senators. It was just a good time, good turnout, excitement all the way up to the end. Now, did anyone get up during the uh, during the game, like maybe during halftime or anything, and say, "Now, if you think this is good, just wait till y'all approve of the vet school." Hey, you know, it, uh, the, the, the vet school is being talked about a lot, as it has been. But, uh, you know, I think it, uh, you know, people, people were concentrating on basketball last night. <laughs> well, you know, I'm just trying to squeeze it in. Before we get in, into some of the different house bills, uh, what is the latest on the vet school? What are, are there a lot of discussions moving forward? Because there, I know there was some discrepancy between the, te- you know, the, the base budgets of the house and the Texas Senate, what's what's the latest on that? Well, let's lay out the, the framework first. Of course, we, we all know it's needed. We look at the number of vets that we need in the state, the number of, of vets that are being produced in the state versus the people that are having to come in from other states and even other countries. They get their education down in the Caribbean and come back. And so we know there's a need there and the need's not being filled. So regardless of how we do that, we know that there is a need and th- that's what the vet school is going to do. If you look at it, of course, in order to get it to the governor to where he can sign off on it. It has to go through the House and the Senate. On the House side, which is what we're in control of over here, uh, it, it's in the base budget. It's in there at $17 million as, um, and uh, we have passed that budget, and we've sent it on to the Senate. In the Senate budget, it's my understanding that it's in there at $4 million, but they also have a provision in there that says it has to be approved by the coordinating board. We don't like that. That leaves it up to uh, the coordinating board, which really doesn't need to make that determination, and I think has only made that one time in the past on a school like this. So what we want to do is get that out of there, get it closed and, uh, you know, get that funding level up to when the House and the Senate get together or possibly when it gets out on the Senate floor, it gets amended and it gets bumped up to what we have and then also gets rid of that uh, language that is just not needed, not wanted, and could potentially kill the vet school. The, the coordinating board, have they come out one way or the other on the vet school in the past? They, uh, they've, they've kind of been quiet, but, the, you know, the rumor is that they're, uh, you know, they're being uh, in a direction that's not a direction that we necessarily want to Correct. Be. Yeah. So, that's what I've been uh, hearing right. is that they're and, not on board with this. Yeah. And so, uh, you know, I think that, uh, again, if we look at the need, it, it stands on its own. The school itself, the way they're doing it, the way it's tailored to large animal uh, veterinarians in that area, in our area where the need is, uh, it, it, it's pretty apparent. Now, obviously, you're in the House, you're not in the Senate, but from what you have heard on, on this, this, I guess, rider or this language uh, that, that money must be approved by the coordinating or something has to be approved by the coordinating right. board, does that mean all money? Like even, you know, if someone says, hey, here's a check for 40 million bucks? Well, the way the, it's my understanding that the coordinating board will work is if the legislature tells them this is what you're going to do, then that's what they will do. Hmm. So they cannot override the legislature. Okay. You know, so so that is good news. But we don't want the decision, uh, you know, as a big Texas Tech fan, yeah. we don't want the decision to be made at the coordinating board. There's right. no reason for that. We know that we need it. The state knows they need it. You look at all the ag uh, groups. They want they're saying we need this. So, you know, that's that's where it is. There's no reason to have an, a, a, another party come out and look at it. Yeah, absolutely. Let's talk about uh, some of the uh, some of the, the the big bills that have been moving forward uh, in uh, in the uh, Texas House. Uh, one of those dealing with education. Sure. Uh, tell folks about the, the education bill. Well, we had uh, HB3, uh, Dan Huberty, uh, 
you know, from you know outside the Houston area, uh, put put that bill out. We laid it out on the floor. Actually, it got done. I would say in what we we thought record time as far as getting the amendments through, getting through them over. You know, around 100 amendments were filed, and uh, uh, we got done fairly early with that. They talk about compressing the, the property tax, and compressing is just a fancy name for reducing mm -hmm. uh, by four cents. Uh, increases state funding. It uh, puts about nine billion dollars into public education and, and um, what is being billed as tax relief. And, and so I think there's a lot of good things going on. What we in the House want to do is have that money go to the local school districts and then they figure out we want it to get to the teachers. That's where we want to increase what is being paid and have that money being spent. And, you know, if we look draw parallels between that and what we did with the, the, the troopers and folks a few years back, we, we found that uh, at, the, at the state level we were training a lot of troopers at state dollars. And then at, when, once the troopers were uh, up and trained and had some work experience, they were leaving to get higher paid jobs in, in other areas of law enforcement. What we did is we raised those amounts and we, I've had several uh, rangers, troopers, folks come up to me and say, you won't, John, you won't believe the quality of folks we are getting now. The applicants uh, have increased as well as the good folks that are there want to stay now. A lot of the guys wanted to stay and women wanted to stay and be in law enforcement at the state level, but it's hard to turn that down when when you have families and you can make more money someplace else. And so now they're able to stay and do really what they want to do. Yeah. And, and so it's exciting. And I'm hoping that that pours over into the students and we see what what, uh, what kind of teachers we can get. And we've got great teachers. Of course, my district director, um, Donna, who you, you know well, she, uh, you know, is one of the examples of the kind of teachers that we want. We mm -hmm. want those type of teachers teaching our kids. And, and before we take our next break, and I, I want to ask you about, I, I guess, a couple of mechanisms. Is there a mechanism in place? Because what, what this would do would, com, you know, compress, uh, you know, the, the property tax, the school property tax. It would compress that rate, right? Right. It, is there a mechanism in place that says, okay, you can, we'll, we'll do that on year one, but on year two, you can't come back and jack it up, you know, four percentage points or, you know, whatever you want to do. What there is is a trigger amount, and right now that is at 2.5%. So if the properties taxes go up by more than 2.5%, we put that back or enable the people, the voters, to go back and say, do we want to pay this much? Now, that was taken out of the property tax bill. Is that right. somewhere well, that, else? That's, that, that's, and that's where we're going to have to see where this all ends up. There's some, uh, you know... Uh, discussion between the House and the Senate and where it is. So, you know, that's part of what's going to happen. Uh, you know, it's uh, the old story of the sausage making. Yeah. We're going to watch that unfold on Thursday. This Thursday on the House floor, uh, uh, Representative Burroughs, Chairman Burroughs, is going to have that uh, bill laid out on the floor and people are going to be uh, giving their tweaks. Right. Now, the interesting thing about it is in calendars yesterday, uh, we passed a rule that said, okay, you have to pre-file your amendment. So what that does is it gives all of us a chance to look at it and say this is an idea of what we think is going to be happening. These are the amendments. Now where it gets a little tricky is on the amendments to the amendments. Right. And that's where things sort of change and the, 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 the ball game starts changing. But at least we have a good idea of what's going on and what people are thinking. So you think, uh, just real quickly before we take a break, you think that that trigger that two and a half percent maybe put back into well for I, I think we, we, we need something like that to where yeah. you know we have that because that, that that's my biggest concern is our property taxes have gotten out of control each of us look at what we pay when we have a house and have to write that check and it's gotten out of control we don't own our homes we rent them from the government i don't want the government to be my landlord right and when we come back we'll continue our discussion with representative john frulo here at the texas state capitol Chad HD Show News Talk, KFYO. Chad HD Show News Talk, 95.1 FM, 790 AM, KFYO. Uh, we're visiting with Representative John Frulo. Uh, tomorrow, the House will debate property, uh, the property tax bill. Anything that people, 
uh, need to, I guess, pay attention to as far as that debate goes tomorrow? And then what are some other important dates coming up? Well, it's on Thursday, right? Yes, Thursday. Thursday. I'm, I'm weird on my You're, you're jumping right ahead. Now. You're too excited to get to that property tax and uh, lower <laughs> that bill. I am, absolutely. <laughs> People are mad in Lubbock right now. They got their property tax No, they're pretty bill. excited. That tech game is, uh, you yeah. Yeah, but then uh, they go back to their property tax well, bill that's somewhere, yeah. you know. They yeah, have to look at that. 15th. That's the, that's the next date that none of us will be real happy. <laughs> that's true. So uh, as far as uh, – Yeah, the, the debate, anything that people need to be paying attention to on this, anything that you think may stand out. I, I think what's included in it, what, what, uh, you know, how it works, what that uh, trigger amount ends up being. You know, at the end of the day, what we need to do is pr provide property tax relief. And, and that, that's, that's a problem that we're having. Again, we're, we're paying too much. And so I think what we need to do is figure out what is going on, what are some of the alternatives or solutions, and, and how can we make it to where, again, we, we get to where we slow that rate down and, and still take care of the needs. And it's, uh, you know, none of us down here, at least uh, from my perspective, want to – try and generate more money than we need to run the state. We want the state to run efficiently, you know, a lot like a business that we would run. Yeah. And uh, but we, we have to provide services. We need roads. We need to educate. Uh, there's a lot of different things that, uh, you know, the police. We, you know, we as a state spend over $800 million on border protection. That, that's something that the federal government should be doing that they're not doing. Have a, have a little bit less than a minute to go. Okay. What are some uh, other important dates coming up? Well, I, I think one of the things to look at is uh, the total number of bills that have been filed is around 6,600. That was about 6,300 last year, so a 6% increase. We've, we're uh, now in the 92nd day of session, which means, you know, we've got 48 days left. So we're two-thirds through, and this is where it starts getting crazy. As you were here last time, we talked about how it's kind of like a Richter scale of as things in increase as the days get shorter and things increase it gets a little crazier absolutely then, uh you know and then the, the first uh, deadline day uh, a house bill has to pass the house by may 9th uh, you know so it's 30 days yeah all right representative so, john frulo thank you very much appreciate your time